Yo, welcome to the greatest, the greatest brothers uh, related podcast on the internet. None of them are better than the two fine looking brothers. Fuck them all. Anyway, uh, what are we talking about, my fine looking brother? Well, before we get into the, the main topic of tonight's topic cast, I thought there were a couple of things you wanted to, to speak about, to discuss, to speak about, analyze. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. You... <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, I don't know you how I feel. Out. I don't know if, how I feel about it. Okay, so you don't want to talk about it? Well, I don't. I don't really know what you're referring to. I'm just. Uh, I'm just. Thing you, the vague. purchase you made. Oh, I made. I made a bad. I made a. I mean, I. I made a great purchase today. P- possibly, the greatest purchase I've ever made in my entire life. How much did you spend? I spent fourteen dollars. Fourteen. You spent mother fourteen dollars. Fourteen on this thing. motherfucking smackaroons. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Okay, I the the you're, justification you're destroy your life. The justifi- like just... the justification is that I will make I will make the money back in the ad revenue from the video that I make on it. So, That's true. Whatever. So also, do you want to reveal what it is? Yes, I bought a I bought an official game theory fidget spinner. <laughs> how do you how do you sleep at night? I haven't slept since I bought it, so I don't know if I will be able to. (laughs) How do you live with this? How do you look at yourself in the mirror? I haven't looked at myself in the mirror yet. You're giving me all these situations I haven't haven't gotten myself into yet. So, to give us the rundown, you're sitting at work. (laughs) I'm sitting at my desk at work, yes. And somehow, in in your rigorous work schedule, you come across... An ad for an official MatPat fidget spinner. I bought an official MatPat Game Theory fidget spinner. Okay. That's exactly how it happened. And there was something else you wanted to talk about. Um, I bought some some pizza also. Uh, converse of this, I spent two dollars on dinner tonight because I'm eating. Uh, I'm eating a. I, I ate two slices of two fine looking brothers pizza. That's what they're called. That's their name. Really? Oh, it's two brothers, but they, they are two brothers, so we're just going to assume that they're fine looking. I don't really know how Vic they look. Vic just posted a video on Facebook from his trip to DC. I wonder if he uh, went near where I live. Didn't he post oh, yeah, a, he picture took a picture from there? He took a picture on my street. Yeah. That's crazy. So crazy. It's not crazy. Because it's actually a spot you could feasibly walk through. Like, if you're coming from a... If you're coming from, um... Which station is it down there? Shit. If you're coming from a certain station, if you lived in D.C., it's not... It's not, a. Uh... Oh my god, I'm forgetting the station names. I've been away too long. No, oh my god. it's fading! No. What was the one that I always took every morning? Shoot. I don't know. Fuck. It this it's not the station closest to the Capitol building, it's the one uh before that. On the uh blue line, blue silver. Oh, on the blue line. If you if you got off that and you were going to the Capitol building, you would pass my street. How dare they? But, Just um, pass your street like that? Anyway, tonight's podcast has a specific topic. What is that topic, Joshua? We, tonight is going to be a, what I like to call, is this the first medium cast? Um, it could very well be. So this is introducing a new type of topic cast for the Fine Lucky Brothers podcast called the Music Cast. And you Tonight, guessed it, this will be the first musical episode of the podcast. Everything from this point on will be renditioned in 
singing. I'm I'm Lin Manuel Miranda. I'm the I'm I'm the guy. I was a politician in the American Revolution, and now I'm in. I sing Moana songs for for people. Wait, what? I had a mustache at a point. What the now fuck are you I, talking now about? Bare face. What are you now saying? I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm hip with the Tumblr kids. Um, Who are you talking yeah. about? What is going what on mean? right now? I'm your special guest on this podcast, Lin Manuel Miranda. Lin Manuel Miranda. I is this a, is this an insufferable social media joke that I, I played, haven't uh, gotten? No, I've I played uh, I played Hamilton in the hit Broadway musical Hamilton. I wrote Hamilton because I'm I'm cool with the the hip Tumblr kids. Ah, uh, I and, see. Um, and I um, then I went on and I murdered Aaron I be- Burr. I became after I murdered Aaron Burr, I transcended reality and I became a Polynesian god, and that's when I decided, hey, I should make Moana, and I I created. I went back in time, create, gave Walt, Dis- incepted the idea to Walt Disney to create <laughs> Disney, the company. Dude, and you totally just, incepted him. Just so I could, uh, I could make a Moana. <laughs> you like, you needed funding to make this like CGI dream that you had before computers were even invented. Mm-hmm. So you, you planted the, the seed. The funding I got from uh, killing Aaron Burr and stealing his fortune. Yeah. simply wasn't enough. well like because you're alexander hamilton you just have an unlimited supply of ten dollar bills they just give them to you <laughs> it's a it's a royalty for every one i they pay print. everything in ten dollar bills yeah exactly i make i make ten dollars for every ten dollar bill produced exactly exactly so i on... also um i also i also play uh i play diva in overwatch I don't get that joke. I'm staring at a a, a picture that has a bunch of things in it, and the diva's in it too. So, um, diva is, uh, this a, is... A, diva's a woman, not not a, not a, a man. Are you? Are, did you just assume my gender? I assume diva's gender. I I am I'm a I'm a prominent figure on Tumblr. So, I I'm sorry. But this is the this is a very, very diva's isn't diva like a South Korean woman? I know I, I I've never. So how seen... did you get into music, Zach? <laughs> Hold on, I want to figure this out. You're you're describing a man, right? The person who plays Hamilton. Or is Hamilton played by a woman? Is Alexander Hamilton played by a woman? <laughs> it's I'm... it's it's Lin Manuel Miranda. You're gonna tell me what my gender is i don't know who Do... does she play <laughs> who is that who is that i'll what I'll, I'll send you a i'm gonna take a picture of myself right now and send it to you on discord <laughs> who is lin-manuel miranda i rather... i'll take a picture of myself right now and send it to you on discord why um, do you think he plays Diva? <laughs> he plays Diva in Overwatch. I play Diva in Overwatch. I'll send. Oh, you, you don't. A... You don't mean he voice acts her. You mean he actually plays the character. But uh, both. Okay. He, you... I don't even like Wait, Overwatch. What am I here's doing? Here's a photo I just took right now of me uh, recording this podcast. <laughs> And uh, this is a picture I took. Um, I took uh, last night. Um, this was a mirror selfie I took. Um, that's yeah. me. <laughs> that's that was a. I love that you just have a mirror sitting outside of your home, pointed up towards the clouds. <laughs> what is this? What is the? Okay. What is the bit? What is the diva in Overwatch bit? I don't get this. I don't. I. I. It's just me. Wait. Wait. I have another. Um. I have another. Uh. Mr. Mr. Lin. 
Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> oh, I took another uh, mirror selfie just now. I'll send it to you right now. Is it is it gonna be you dressed up as diva? Because if it isn't, I don't want to see. No, it. no, it's it's just me, Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> no one watching the podcast can see this at all. Oh, but, oh, but here's Mr. Uh... Mr. Lin Manuel Miranda just sent me a picture of him. It, it's a just a picture of Diva. Why why did you send me a picture of? I, I'm done. Oh, with, no, 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 I, no, no, no. I, I, I'm done with this bit. No one can see this bit. This bit isn't this. This is porn. You can't. You. you, you <laughs> This is porn with an iFunny logo on it. You can't put this in the podcast. As nice as it may be. <laughs> Even though it's kind of garbage. So how did you get into music? Alright, I got into music. Uh, I, I feel like I have talked about this before, but I was not into music for most of my life. Uh, until I was like... 14 and then i i played guitar hero and that sort of like gave me an entry point into music where my tastes could evolve from there guitar hero was a lot of people's start like it was alberto's start too it had a lot of good music i listened to a guitar hero 3 song today what song was that i listened to the devil went down to georgia cover and it's it's really something you know, for years I didn't know that was a cover. I thought that was the original song. It's it's, it's man, rest in peace, Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> I really I hope Alberto listens to this one. I can't believe Lin Manuel Miranda is fucking dead. Johnny Rise and Pure Moon play that fiddle hard. Cause hell's broke loose in Georgia and the devil plays the cards. And if you win, you get the shiny fiddle made of gold. But if you lose, the devil get your soul. Good, very good song. How do you feel about it? It's a good song, but um. Continue your, your narrative. Oh. Because this is a topic cast, after all. Yeah, of course. So, I, um, I did that. And then, I think I went from, like, the Guitar Hero 3 songs, I got into, like, Metallica, Dragon Force. Then I got into, like, um, Stop Typing, Little, Little Joshua. I, um, <laughs> I'm listening. I got into, uh, like, pop music. I got into 303. Who's a, a cool band. They have some cool songs. And then, uh, yeah, I started listening to the radio. The local Miami radio. No, no. I got, I got pretty heavily into, into, like, pop music. No. And then around, like, early high school, uh, I started listening with, like, Isaac and Sammy and the boys. I started getting into, like, 80s music. Which is... Okay, that's good. And... And then I got into like uh, like electronic music on the internet, and that kind of led me into uh, in, into like my current tastes. So, would you say like I know your your current tastes very well, like but would you say those stemmed more off of a resurgence of your initial love for Vocaloid from like middle school, or would you say they stem more off Cogro Project? Because yeah, Cogro okay. Project was a big turning point for you in music, I'd say. Um, so, yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, I was into Vocaloid around, like, 8th grade, I want to say, probably around the time, uh, probably, like, post, post pop music, but, like, pre-80s music. Uh-huh. And, uh, I really liked it, and I just lost it all of a sudden for some reason. I think it's because I, like, I switched phones. Oh, no, I got a, I think I got a phone then and i i switched off my ipod and i just never re-downloaded it so and i I had like no idea what like actual culture is and then around like uh like late high school like stop posting pictures (laughs) of lynn manuel miranda 
to my of, uh, stop posting pictures of yourself with <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson in our private Discord server that we only use for recording podcasts. So what do you mean? What do you mean? Anyone? Any? All of the people that are going to listen to this can see this. <laughs> yes, me and you. Alberto's here mm-hmm. too, but he's also not going to listen to this. Sharpen dicks. Sharpen dicks. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Okay, I'm done with this this shit posting. I'm I'm done. I'm 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 tired of seeing his face. Are you coming clean? What? That you're not actually Lin Manuel Miranda, the the I'm... songwriter. Of... I'm tired of seeing my own face. Oh, uh, okay. It's Sometimes like I like to mirror. see other I people's see. faces in the wild. Okay, so... Um, yeah, like, like late, later, uh, late into high school, uh, when I was, uh, with you guys, when I met you guys, I was getting, like, back into, into everything I was into as a kid, and Vocaloid music was one of them, and it's, it's sort of, like, taken off, and it's become, like, my favorite uh, type of music. And my fa- It's not even a genre. It's just like... Do you it, think it was Kagura Project that got you back into Vocaloid music, it, though? It definitely was. And um, I, I don't think Kagura Project is the reason why I like it, but it was definitely the reason why I got back into it. Kagura Project is, is just an absolutely I- incredible narrative told through song. It's it's really like I'd say, I'd say Cogger Project is the best, um, the best story storytelling album. Is yeah. that what what is what is the what is the word for an album that tells a story? It's called a concept album. Concept album. I'd say Cogger Project, the albums involved in Cogger Project are the best concept albums. I I do I believe that's correct. I believe they're also, like, one of the greatest narratives ever, like, put into music, if that makes sense. They're, they're really, yeah. they're really, really good. <laughs> if you have not listened to, I'd say go listen to, well, obviously you're not going to fucking understand it because it's in Japanese, but... They're, they're subtitled. Listen. You can, you can pull up the, you can pull up the sub, it's, like, very well translated. Once you understand all the subtitles... Well, no, you could just you could just know what it means based on the feeling of the music. Mm-hmm. There's some just like you just tell. This is shout the out, this is the shout fucking... out to the person that probably will be listening to this. Uh, hey, Josh. hey, Josh, out there, fuck you for making that a thing. That's not what I said at all. <laughs> all you guys are just misinterpreting. This is like the one thing where I find it. I know I know what you actually meant, obviously. But I find it so funny that I just go behind Josh on this. You, I think you, you, I, you sort of understand my position, though. I'm being victimized here, is what's happening. <laughs> I'm a victim. victim. I'm a victim of abuse. You guys keep keep bringing up every everything I've ever done, and never let it go ever. <laughs> this this is complete atonement. It's complete atonement. It's anyway, atonement. All right. Um... <laughs> Back to Kagura Project because it's great. Because um, it's the say... it's probably the greatest musical creation, uh, in terms of in terms of narrative ever ever. In made. terms of narrative, I'd say definitely. Um, even even musically, like I have to I have to exclude Kagura Project when I list off my favorite Vocaloid stuff because it's just way too good. Yeah, or else so, it, it um, just takes up such a large portion of like my top ten. Yeah, I I understand what you mean. That's why in in my three by three for albums, um, I kind of put I, I restrict I restrict it to one. Yeah, I kind of symbolized all of Kagura Project through M's, which because is I feel like M's has the Makaka City M's has the definitive versions of um of every. Most of the songs, I'd say. I think I can like, say that uh, Makaku City M's is possibly the greatest album ever released. Like, <laughs> it's it's up there. It's definitely in the top top ten. But that's why like, it's on my three by three. Yeah, you everything can, on my three by three except for my favorite is pretty pretty much equal standing. Any any other album on there, you can say like, oh, it's it's you know every track is good. It's concise. It's 
You know, it's got some great tracks on it, but M's just, M's has like 50 tracks on it, and every single one is good, except for like a couple. But it has, it has like 50 good tracks on it, it's crazy. Yeah. Such, my, a, my stance, such an insane album. And this is why I love M so much, my stance with Vocaloid music, like, comes down to this, is that a lot of Vocaloid music is great, however... If there is a version in which, like, I'm not saying it's it's better, like, objectively. I'm saying if there is a version in which a human or with a good voice is singing the song, me personally, I tend to like that sound better. Okay. I understand why people prefer Vocaloid, but me personally, like, like, for example, like, that's why I said come back from Kaku City M's, because a lot of the songs were switched to, from Vocaloid singing to, like, pretty much, like, the humans actual Be, singer singing but, and it it to me those are oh i always prefer those so i think what you're saying has a lot of validity but the the great the thing that i love about vocaloid is that it enables anyone to come out and create a it, it, and create a song with lyrics you don't need to like hire someone or singer. find someone who can sing you can make it yourself yeah. even if you can't sing perfect example of this is audio which we will get to eventually yeah so but, um like I, I even though i do really like like i i enjoy the aesthetic of vocal synths and like i really appreciate good tuning but uh it, and the goal of that is to sound like a human usually there's a lot of songs that don't aim to do that and are still very good and are even better mm-hmm. because of it but the, again, the main thing is I, I like the I like the sort of like indie Japanese scene that sort of built around it because that's me, me too. Mm-hmm. Not as nowhere near as much as you, but well, yeah, yeah. See, like I think a great video to watch is what's the audio video? Uh, an with interview the with girl? monitor. Yeah, we'll link it in the description. We won't. We won't. We won't monitor, but, but you can look. But it up. uh yeah like go watch that video it's it's a perfect explanation of like why people like the vocaloid genre i'd say and uh it's the perfect perfect explanation of the appeal of the vocaloid genre if you're just so need me and i feel like the real reason for me goes into my entire history with music is that i grew up on music with human vocals and i think you really sort of a big part of your like evolution with music came through vocaloid and electronic music yeah so i feel like you're more i guess comfortable hey, with I, have the, I am i have the title of the video it's called meet monitor an interview with audio's vocalist that's what it's called so look that up it's great anyway yes uh it's it, it really stuff is influenced by what you grew up with uh mm-hmm. i've always liked the sort of uh I, i've gotten very used to the vocal synth aesthetic where it's it's almost comforting to hear so i really enjoy like even even botchy even stuff that's like not not well done i can still enjoy it because i'm so used to it yeah i I know it's like it's really off-putting to people who who are not used to it but to me it's just totally normal yeah like there's some stuff like that that sounds completely fine in fact really good to me like audio um most of the Vocaloid in the uh, Kagura project sounds good to me. Um, not all, but most. Um, I'd say Dapple Rock and Nehru and stuff sounds great. But, um... Well, Nehru's, like... Nehru's but there's a some... fucking legend of, like, wide-appeal rock vocal and music. He's so... He's great. He's, he, he's le- legitimately a legend. But I'd say there's some that you do listen to and from, like and you show me and everything that i think sound really bad they're like really like pitchy and like you do you sort of understand yeah. what i'm trying to say at all you, like what and what's your example i can't think of a specific example right now but there's some where i'm just like ah my ears for <laughs> it's just like really high pitched really like almost like random noisy kind of in a way where it's like I, I think i i think i know the song you're talking about and i want to talk about that because that's like my go-to what, example. what song is it it's on your mark by task 
which is send it to me. I don't know if it. it I'm gonna, it I'm gonna play same. it. I'm gonna play it right now. Okay. Uh, um, while you're getting it ready, that's that's pretty much the gist for you for Vocaloid. Tef. Um, <laughs> what? The the picture on Google Music of Task is not correct. It's like. It's like a Hispanic dude with like, with, with like <laughs> the sh- like the sides of his head shaved. I'm gonna send it to you, but um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. So like, I think I think this is the song you're thinking of. I'm gonna skip ahead to the vocals. No. Oh my god. I don't think it's what I was thinking of, but I don't like it. What? What do you? What do you think? I <laughs> something. I, I don't know. Something really like. I don't know. Um, have we talked about out of service? And speaking of Vocaloid, not have we, we haven't talked at talked all about, 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 them, sur- about them yet. I, I have some very choice things to say because I haven't gotten to like put this in the video yet. Do you want to hear it? Um. Yeah, because I'm trying to clump pretty much all the Vocaloid together. Before we get into others, like like like, because my history is mostly not Vocaloid. Yeah, so yeah, wanna, yeah. Like, so we'll get clump. we'll we'll get done with like my history, but I, I want to know what mm-hmm. you think about them first. Out of service, yeah. I think the two albums I've listened to by Out of Service are fantastic. I'd say um, I like Shoe Injunction a little bit better than uh, Planet Eight. I feel like Planet Eight has a better overall like feel i guess like planet 8 is just this better overall flow like while i'd say shoe injunction has the better songs i i think i think except I for um you. except for the prismatic humanizer which is one of their best songs i really i think that's one of the greatest songs ever <laughs> like See, if I knew, if I looked at the lyrics, like, translation lyrics, and knew what it meant, then maybe I can, like, feel that, like, sort of the emotion in it and stuff, but, but I just don't know what it means. The, I think the great part about it is you don't need the words to know the emotion, right? Like, you, you know what happens. It starts off, like, like sort of, it's, like, robotic vocaloid, and it's, it slowly gets better over the course of the song until it's... And it like, ends with an actual human singing. Yeah my which perfect is, transition <laughs> which is <laughs> which is amazing because she's not credited anywhere on the album it's a complete surprise There's that's, no am- that's so album. cool ah uh, that's it, also it. every the the great thing about that album is every song the name of every song ends with the thing that the next song begins with Would the name of the song? What do you mean? So, well, you know how like um, hold on, I'm 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 I have the album right here. I'm gonna pull it out because I wanna. I okay, wanna, you have physical copies. Yeah, I wanna list off the names. So, oh. So um, yeah, you know how like every every song ends with like a fade into the next song. Yeah. So that All applies. All of albums do that. Yeah, that applies to the names of the songs too. So. It's it's everything on this album is like it's it's like a planet. It's cyclical. It goes in. It, it's I love the like commitment to the aesthetic of the planet thing. So, Zach, mm-hmm. I'm really interested in what you have to say, but I feel like we have to have a breaking news interruption here. What is the breaking news? I can this can oh, wait. Shit. Okay, you ready for this headline? Sure. By the hill. Democrats introduce Covfefe Act to make it illegal for Trump to delete his tweets. I'm I'm done with this world. I'm done with this country. This is a This is going this to is, get passed in the fucking law. Well, this it's is, not it's no, not going it, to get it's not going to get passed. It's not going to get passed. Representative <laughs> Mike his name is great Mike Quigley 
uh, introduced legislation Monday to classify presidential social media posts, including President Trump's much-discussed tweets, as presidential records. The Communications Over Various Feeds Electronically for Engagement, COFEFI Act, Th- that's which the has worst. the same acronym as the infamous Trump Twitter typo last month, would amend the Presidential Records Act to include social media. Presidential records must be preserved according to the Presidential Records Act, which would make it potentially illegal for the president to delete tweets. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It definitely is. It's, there is no way. There is no way there is any good intention behind this fucking act. It's a waste of goddamn time. It's literally, it's it's literally just someone being like, hoo, 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 I'm gonna get back at Trump. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> Oh, I, th- I wanted you to transition to a song to bring us back into the music. E, 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 e. That's, uh, okay, keep talking about out of service. Speaking of music, Ruby Volume 4 soundtrack album is out right now, and I'm yeah. going to buy it tonight, and I will give my opinions to you tomorrow. Cool, I'm, I'm really excited for that. But uh, let's talk about how the how the title thing works, because I feel like we yes. left everyone on a cliffhanger. Yes, factor. we did. So every, it even, even like, kind of, it hints at it on the back of the album that I'm looking at right here. Every, uh, every track ends with the letter that the next one starts with. That's so, really cool. Seventh Room ends with an M, and then Metabolic Kubu, and then Buriki no Tsubame, and then Mit, and then... Buriki no Tsubame, and then Meteorite Saturday too, and then Twilight Hero, and then uh, Hero, and then O is uh, O was it Utsotsuki Serenade, and then that one ends with whatever uh, Serenade do, and then they say Art, and then uh, Art ends with T, and then T the Prismatic Humanizer R. It ends with R. R is the beginning of Revi, or Re Eight, R E V I I. V I I is uh, or Re Re Seven. Sorry, not Eight. Uh, and then, yeah, V I I is the Roman numerals for Seven, and then Seventh Room. It all comes full circle. And also, That's every cool. every song represents a uh, a planet in the solar system, uh, except for Seventh Room, which is the sun. But the other eight represent the planets. I didn't know that. Uh, you would know if you had the album, but uh, uh, I know I don't like, know the album, Zach. It's to- yeah. No, it's totally fine. I have the uh, the the uh, digital version of the album. Uh, yes. We should talk about Google Music because it is probably in my top five inventions of all time. It's so good. It's great. It's it is hands down the best way to collect store organize and listen to music well other than just like having it saved as files but for like listening on the i think go. i think i like i like google i like google music better than uh saved as files really yes google, because google music because is... you can have it on any device wherever you go as long as you have your account information you upload your albums so how it works is you get the files for albums you upload your album the files to this almost like google drive specifically for music and it automatically adds all the album information like the art the the name all the information about everything every track every song and it puts your complete music collection in the cloud and lets you listen to it anywhere and it's amazing, and it it's a complete collection of everything I want to listen to, and I can listen to it anywhere. So I have a – it's almost like because I have so many songs, I have 2,468 songs right now, and I still haven't uploaded some of my albums. So because I have that, it's like a constant radio station at my disposal of only good stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, if I shuffle, I it's never going to be bad because it's my collection. Uh-huh. And – 
it's it's constant multi-genre radio station of everything I like no matter where I go and it's yeah. amazing I only have 1700 songs so you're quite a quite ahead you're ahead of me by quite a bit and you can mm-hmm. and you can store up to 30,000 for free you will never run out and how much does it cost to store more I, I don't even know like five bucks a month or something I mean I'm probably never gonna hit it but uh yeah, I'm never gonna hit thirty thousand songs. If I'm only at two thousand after like a couple of years. Yeah. So, uh, back to out of service. <laughs> Google Music is a great service, but out of service is a great musical uh, duo. So they're they're uh, they're a Japanese duo. Uh, their names are Kai and out Kanishi. of and service. <laughs> no, Kai Ono and Kanishi Hayao. They are. They're just they're two dudes who met two. They're they're two fine looking Japanese men who met while they were studying at Kyoto University. They're studying not even studying music. They were studying um I think one is physics and one is chemistry. So they yet they are somehow and and yet one of the greatest musicians working today. And these two, these two goofs, who met in college and started producing vocal and music, started pro- like, hold on one second. They just like started producing with like no, with like no fanfare, no like bad songs. They just, it, they just released a great song right off the bat. And what was their first song? Psycho Motion, one of their best. I don't know how you how you come into this. Usually, usually people will have like an album or two at the beginning of their career where it's like, eh, that's not very good. But literally, they immediately start off, and their first song is fucking amazing, and they're just they're and they're just literal geniuses. And I don't think it's an exaggeration to say they they are the greatest musicians to ever live. Just this just this duo that makes like fucking vocaloid music that nobody listens to i legitimately think they're they're musical prodigies and they're possibly the greatest ever live mm. yes yes better than the beatles better than no the boy i have band. a whole i have a whole discussion about the beatles narrative coming up but we'll get to that eventually i, I, don't, get, I don't get the beatles narrative i'll i'll explain it i mean but um yeah, Out of Service is great. The two I haven't listened to all of their discography, obviously, but the two albums I have listened to, which are again, uh, Shoe Injunction and Planet Eight, were both fantastic albums. I'd say I'd give, eh, fuck it, who cares about number ratings? They're both great. Yeah, go listen to them. Um, ratings are dumb. None of their or, uh, none of their albums are available online. They're all. Well, actually, some of them are on iTunes now, actually. I think I got them from you. I think you just gave me the files or something. Yeah. Well, recently they put a couple on iTunes, so go go download those, even though iTunes sucks. They're, uh, they're not You want to hear something really that's really pissing me off? What is it? Ruby Volume 4 soundtrack's out, right? Wrong. The Amazon version is not available yet. You can only get it on iTunes which I refuse to buy. Marvel yeah. versus Costco wholesale. <laughs> oh man, leaked you three footage. <laughs> Marvel versus Costco. Oh my god. All right, anyway. Uh, oh yes. no. Yes? Spoiler for the track list. Sure. I May Fall, Harry Lodes remix. Harry, I don't know what Harry Lodes Harry is. Lodes? <laughs> Harry Lodes? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I didn't get it until you said it. Harry Lodes. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite remix. <laughs> you know, I actually met James Landino. H A R R Y L O T. Yeah, Harry Lodes. <laughs> oh my god, no, I got excited because it's a cool remix of I May Fall, which is one of the best Ruby songs. You know, it's not actually about Ruby. It's 
I, I refuse to accept that. I, re, I, I refuse to accept it, that. We, it has been a word of Godded by Jeff Williams himself. No, no, no. He never said it. If if, if Jeff Williams fucks I, up, I heard it fucks, up fucks over his fans, but not every fan is there to see it. Did it actually happen? I was there to see it, and I will tell you on this podcast. <laughs> it is about Lord of the Rings. It's not about the, the real Wubby. Okay, okay, we're transitioning. All right, yes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just mad. I'm, I'm, I'm furious. I may fall is about, is about the battle for beacons. So that's it. Agree. Anyway, um, so should I start in my, my lineage with music? Because yes. at first I was just gonna do a general thing, but then I realized I remember specifically everything. I want to hear in, I in planning hear. for this podcast. I remember everything. Yeah, so I want to hear, hear everything from what happened. So my my dad, he's like a huge classic rock fan. That's what he grew up with, and that's what he he has a huge album collection, hundreds of CDs, and uh, just 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 a ton of great music. And pretty much what happened is when I was in like I think like late fourth early fifth grade um my dad's an accountant he got like a job with this place called school of rock yeah i don't know if you heard you you know it's, I've school heard of of rock. It, yeah. it's based on the movie it's like little like schools around the uh around the country that like teach kids how to play like guitar drums oh wait, i thought you were keyboard, doing a bit rock music no 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 this is real i was in school of rock zach with J- did you meet Jack Black? No. Why not? <laughs> I love I love the sincerity <laughs> of your question. Like like did you meet Jack Black? No. Like why not? Like why didn't you make the effort? Like why you didn't mean? you? That's what I don't understand. I didn't meet him. Why not? <laughs> anyway, so I I. So I was able to go for like a really big discount, and I was I wanted to play guitar. I didn't know any music back then, but like pretty much what was happening is that they were it was building each like each sort of semester of it ends with a big concert based around a certain band, like of covers of a certain band, and I was there for the Beatles semester. Oh, uh, is that why you like the Beatles? Yeah, that's 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 it. But I, I've met like like Connor. I don't know why Connor likes the Beatles Conkle. so much. Yes, Conkel. Oh, talk about Conkel. What about him? He really likes the Beatles. <laughs> that's that's the whole. That's there's no I, joke. I've there. never met. I've still never met him. Would he go to cons? Is he like a con person? I I think I could convince him to. Get him to come to Supercon. We can make it like a big vlog event. Like we'll. we'll I don't know if he still lives camera. in Florida. I'm actually we'll like rush him with cameras. Harass him. Uh, That'll what's his, I was, I was, I sent Lyle a Snapchat today cause it was so hot and he's like, yo, I'm going to me like me and Christian are going to be in, in New York on like the day before I leave. And I'm like, oh, hell oh, yeah. See him. Yeah, I am. Allele. Allele. A cool. yeah, anyway, right. back to, back to my story. And so pretty much like, like, I guess, like, like, my dad started me off on li- me listening to all his Beatles albums, and then eventually they gave me a mix of a bunch of different Beatles songs, and I became obsessed with it, and I liked them all, they're great, amazing, but then it sort of progressed, because we went to their concert that they did before, like, it was, like, right before I started, of Pink Floyd, and that was, like, sort of the second band I ever listened to, and it, it was never as good as the Beatles, it was sort of thing, and it just eventually progressed from there, because... My dad, I got a Zune. A Zune. <laughs> Josh had a I got, Zune. I got a Zune for for all the the whole the whole misconception that led to the purchasing of the Zune for me as a gift was that I wanted a thing that could play mu- not just music but videos and photos. Didn't pictures, I mean. And I was under the impression that iPods couldn't do that, even though they could. I just thought they were only for music. I had this like misconception. So I asked for some for a digital media player that wasn't that wasn't an iPod, specifically. 
and I got a Zune. And I didn't have any music to put on it. To be fair, my iPod did not have a screen to put. My first iPod did not have a screen mm-hmm. to, to look at pictures. So my dad, because I didn't have any music, put all of his his collection onto the Zune. And yeah, it just progressed from there because I listened to that for about from like fifth grade probably was when i first got the zoom like early fifth grade and then it through probably end of eighth grade and that's how i got into that music and you just know, listening to like thousands of songs discovering new stuff all the time because there was so much music there that i you never got, heard before so you got your entire music taste from someone else yeah pretty much and then it progressed further and this was i say the real catalyst for me loving it independently was you know i went to surprise lake camp for years yes and pretty much a big big part of the camp was pretty much like i don't know it's just like everyone sort of liked classic rock music it was kind of just like the music we always had on the music we always listened to and it just became associated you know what I mean? With all yeah. the good memories from Cam and everything, it kind of just became, like, the thing. So I have specific songs that I associate with, like, specific nights and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and it's great. And there's a lot of great music. Um, like, some of my favorites, Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Boston, uh, Pink Floyd. Some of their stuff's great. Um, a lot of great bands. Rush. Uh, Rush is not really classic, but you know what I mean anyway a lot of great stuff and that but like um i think there was also a period in middle school where i still listen to this stuff obviously but another big thing in middle school was vgms video high game quality music. video game rip. which is where the coaster tracks which later which which also became the coaster crusader uh that's where that sort of came from right well, I I think well, Coaster Crusader came first. Coaster yeah. Tracks came after, but but that's where like that that sort of legacy came from. Yeah, but yeah, I was really big into. I think Alberto got me into it. Really, it was big into like video game music, and uh, I would just download. I found I just this time I discovered YouTube to MP3 converters. Yeah, and the I classic. just downloaded. I think at a point I hit like. I think my all-time high was like 800 video game rips, and it what? got to the point where I was just listening to random shit. It was from a video game. I was Josh, and this was like were you listening case to? Thing. Were you listening to video game rips? I, I said I was YouTube? listening to high quality video game rips. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that was. I don't really count that as part of my lineage because it. It began and died with my miserable middle school experience because the main, like, one of the main things that got me here middle school were video games. Like, that was when I played most of the Pokemon games, most of the Zelda games, most of the Mario games. Like, it was like when I played, like, most of the classic games was through middle school. And, um, so it was just, by, like, like, to have that through the day in between when I could, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, when I got home, I could play them. But, like, throughout the day, on the bus, to and from school, in between, like, at lunch, and the, like, like, you know what I mean? That was the thing. It, like, kept me going through. But, honestly, that I don't really count that that much, because it, that lineage died with the end of that era in my life, kind of. I mm-hmm. do not listen to video game music anymore. Rarely listen to video game music anymore. I think the only video game soundtracks I have on my phone... I mean, I have my music library right now. I have the Bumble Fez Tale. soundtrack. Why do you have the Fez, Fez soundtrack? Because it's great. You actually listen like, to it? Yeah, I like Disaster Fees. He He's really he's really great. Yeah. I didn't know you actually uh, listened to that. That's one of my favorite soundtracks. Yeah, it, well, it's in my shuffle. I've never listened to it all the way through. And um, well, yeah. I've gotten the Undertale soundtrack. and That's a recent game. And um, I have the Ocarina of Time soundtrack simply because I won it from club nintendo or something and i have um 
like a Zelda orchestra, like a video game's live specifically for Zelda. That's great. But um, yeah, that's pretty much that. De- that lineage is dead. I don't really listen to that stuff anymore. Mm. Other than the ones you just described. Oh, shoot. We're going to have to pause this podcast. No, we're so close. Well, we're probably like halfway done, I'd All say. Right, let's pause. Yeah. Hello. I am Lin Manuel Miranda. Holy shit, is that the Lin Manuel Miranda the second? Okay, back to what I was saying before we had to, unfortunately, cut. Um, I, I feel like I've... I've I'm not gonna lie. That break was over in an instant for all the for all those listeners out there. But yeah. for me, for me, I've gone on a fucking journey since then. I've like, what happened? I started. I watched all the um, I watched all the the Danny Phantom videos by Monkey and Bedhead Bernie, and I don't. I just like I listened to people die. It was it was weird. <laughs> okay, I need to watch them. Yeah, it's. I, I feel like a changed person. Anyway. Uh, what were we talking okay. about? I, I feel like... <laughs> Recap of my lineage so far. Uh, I went to School of Rock, discovered the oh, Beatles yes. through that. Yes. My dad gave me his music collection on my Zune, l- discovered Classic Rock. Classic Rock became associated with all my summers at camp, so I liked it even more. Perpetuated it. Liked video game music in middle school. Got out of it. Um, I guess I'm going to go back and talk about the Beatles specifically, but uh, high school, I pretty much just listen to classic rock exclusively um yeah pretty much cla- exclusively classic rock up until you sh- i got you show me makaku city actors and that's what got me into kagura project and henceforth vocaloid and a lot of different japanese music because you see classic rock the style of music and the genre is pretty much dead in the United States and England, Cause, cause which were the, the two countries that it was, uh, it, it, that where because it's defined by not being modern; it's by being classic. Of course, of course, there's no new yeah, classic. Yeah, I feel like there's the, a definitive style to the music, though, and I feel like there's ambassadors for this style in Japan for classic rock. And, and I feel like the number one candidate that I have to talk about is one of my current favorite bands, The Pillows. Yes. Um, cool. I discovered them, the the bed. I discovered the bed sheets <laughs> through um, the comforters, <laughs> through um, the duvet, through Fully Cooly, because if you haven't seen Fully Cooly, it's it's a great show, but it's pretty much one six episode long pillows music video, because the entire thing is set. To pretty much what is the Fully Cooly soundtrack is like considered like the Pillows' greatest hits album, I guess. And uh, the Pillows have this this definitive, it's this this like definitive classic rock style. But they're st- well, the height of the Pillows was late '90s, early 2000s. They're still around today, making music and going on tour and stuff. But that was pretty much the height of their. They were very prolific. They, I haven't. There's. I have probably only listened to like half their albums because they have so many albums. They were coming out with like an album a year, for like ten years. Wow. Like they, they were very prolific. Um, to me, best album. I like a lot of their albums, but I'd say best overall is Full on the Planet. It's great. You should listen to it. Um, but yeah, they're pretty much they. It's in Japanese, but. It's one of those things where it's not like a story. You don't need to tran. You don't need the translations. The translations are great, but you don't need them. You sort of get. It's it's all about the feel and the tone of the music, in a way. And it kind of just it has that same feel and tone and like, I don't know. The way it gets you feeling is the same as like some classic like classic rock albums. That's why I love them so much. Best Japanese music artists, in my opinion. Um, Right now, I'm also really into... I like Out of Service now, because of you. I'm also really into Air Aoi, if that's how the fuck you pronounce it. I don't know. <laughs> I have no E-I-R, idea how to pronounce E-I-R-A-O-I. Air Aoi. No idea how to pronounce <laughs> No idea how to pronounce it. Look her up. She's great. Air um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, um, I'm also really into her stuff, so with the rest of Japanese music. I'd say... 
for the most part i'm into classic rock but i'm also it with modern music if it's modern it's pretty much coming from japan for me there's very few i'm i'm that there's the two big exceptions to that are uh the ruby soundtracks which in my opinion are some of the greatest modern albums coming out like (laughs) and their soundtracks which is great they're from an already amazing piece of media but they're like supplementary material to an already amazing piece of media and they're like some of the best albums like ruby volume one the soundtrack to me is one of the, the top 10 best albums ever made um i imagine dragons i like a little bit like could you imagine? It's kind of like one of those things where, like, I like Ima- Like, if I listen to Imagine Dragons, I'm gonna like some of their songs. Like, it's time, and like, demons are great songs. But like, I I'm, I I consider myself I like Imagine Dragons. I don't love them. I don't consider myself a huge fan. But I like their music. The the thing about Imagine Dragons is, I can't. <laughs> I can't imagine a dragon. I know, it's 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 kind of hard to admit, but I cannot Zach, imagine a dragon. Zach, do you are you near albums right now? Yes. Go go to them. I'm at my albums. Go to the Ruby Volume Three soundtrack. Hold on, hold on. I'm pulling out my albums. They're in a box. <laughs> uh, hold on, Ruby. Uh, shit. There's a lot of... There's a lot of stuff. I, I have a lot of albums now. Alright, hold on. Alright, R- Ruby Volume 3 soundtrack and score. W- 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 uh, somewhere on it, there's a creature. A specific type of animal that we've been discussing. Yes, yeah, Kevin. He's a Grim. His name is... The Grim Dragon. Kevin. 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 I don't know why the fuck you're calling him Kevin, That's his name. but... Okay, okay. You're looking at him, right? I, yeah, I'm looking at him. Get that Get that image in your head. I, I, I'm looking intently at him. Put the CD down. Come back to the desk. I'm at the desk. Sit down. I, I'm still sitting. I never got up. Okay. Now imagine that picture you just looked at in town. I I don't remember. Well, what 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 color was it? Shit. Um. He really can't imagine dragons. Oh Fuck. no. Well, even if I even anyway. if I even if I could, I would only be imagining dragon. I think they should change their name to imagining dragon. I think that would be a lot easier. Imagining Kevin. Yeah, imagine imagining Kevin. Oh. Speaking of modern American popular bands that are that I I like, not really love, and will listen to and enjoy a good amount of their music, Paramore is also okay. I like I like one of Paramore's songs. It's solid. Misery Business is their best song. It's an amazing. Oh, it's, it's so their good. only like it's their only like amazing song. I'm in the business. And, uh, of misery. Let's take okay, he's gonna sing. Anyway, I yeah, I can't listen now, to that song and not sing. It's so it's that. Now good. we're gonna go back to the past. Gotta get back. And I've been meaning to write a post about this, explaining this, because I feel like it's something that's very neglected with regards to the Beatles, as because they're always considered like, oh, they're the greatest. They're the greatest musicians and the greatest band. And to me, in my opinion. Although my top two songs are by them, The Beatles is not the best band. Not even ever. close, baby. I'm, I'm No, they're very close. Not even but close, baby. I think the genius behind The Beatles isn't just in their music, but the way they tell they tell a story over the course of... They tell a narrative. It's, the, it's different. Like, Makaka City, you have... It, that's like specific a specific story told through music. Right? What? It's like a strong narrative. Yeah, the 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 Beatles through over the course of their like I think they were producing albums pretty much for like the the sixties, like the ten years of the sixties. Like uh um let me go to their discography right now, because that will help me a lot. And my computer froze. 
do not shut down, do not shut down, do not shut down, do not shut down. Sometimes when it does it, shut down, do not shut down, do not shut down. Please, please. Bye, please. Josh. Don't shut down, <laughs> don't shut down. No, it, I'll it'll miss be instantaneous. You. Can I, can I touch anything? Oh, no, 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 it didn't shut down, it didn't shut down. Oh, Hopefully your computer will just randomly shut down. It, do it does that sometimes. <laughs> um, okay. So, so yeah, yeah, their first album was 1963, and their last album was 1970. So, yeah, solid so, 10 years. Not a solid 10 years, but you know what I mean. It, they were that is that? a solid they 10 much, years. They were, what the fuck do you mean? That's literally 10 years. 1963 to 1970. Oh, I thought you said 1960. <laughs> oh, no. 1963. All right, never mind. That's an unsolid 10 years. To 1970. That's a, soft, that's a very it's, soft 10 years. Yeah, but pretty much it's considered like a... Usually like their career is considered like a story of a day. And so you have... You have Please Please Me with the Beatles introduced and used meet the beatles like like here's i'm, I'm listening that's none of their main albums like hard day's night beatles for sale help rubber soul revolver that goes up through 1966 and from 1963 to 1966 that's when they blew up and became a sensation they were pretty much a boy band you know what i mean the modern definition of a boy band like Backstreet Boys, they were like the and first Sing, boy band, One Direction. Right? They were like the first boy band, and 1963 through 1966, all of their albums leaned towards this. I'd say Revolver was a little bit far than this, but it still definitely had that boy band sort of, sort of a uh, like a aesthetic. They had that look with like the un you know they had that uniformity, like they had like the, the, all the same haircut, all the same suits. Yeah, they look like Beatles. They were pretty yeah. much like, 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 they were pretty much like, you know, the Charmers that they were considered. The Charmers, yeah, then, the Charmers, the Beatles. Then in 1967, there were two albums in 1967, but first half of 1967, a little album came out, which recently had its, its fit, was it 50th anniversary? Yeah. Called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Come Bland, Club Band. And... They now look pretty disheveled. Most <laughs> of them have beards. Most of them have long hairs. And I don't know if this will mean anything to you, but some of the songs on this album include Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Nothing. Um, nothing. Okay. A Day in the Life. So Nada. pretty much this is the point where the Beatles went from complete boy band like mania to complete psychedelic drug nightmare <laughs> but this is also when they started introducing a lot of their characters that they like reoccur in a lot of the different songs like well this this and um i feel like the, this was the start of this trend and i feel like they fully came into its own with magical mystery tour which came out the second half of that year and uh like like on just for example magical mystery tour you got you got magical mystery tour itself which is about uh rolling up to go on the magical mystery tour okay um straight have, uh, straight forward you have songs like you have songs like fool on the hill i am the walrus strawberry fields all these like bizarre sounding no no songs have ever sounded like this before abstract crazy psychedelic drug-induced songs and it just it just progressed from there like that was the, the height like oh is it like a and descent just, in the madness it yes so like like you get the white album which if you've heard revolution number no. nine i don't know if you've listened to that song not. it's not really a song it's it's random squeaking noises instruments random noises from reality set to still and just repeating over and over again number nine, <laughs> number nine for like five full minutes okay that sounds funny okay so you got so yeah the white album and it's just this complete descent of madness then you get yellow submarine which already there it's about the beatles going on an adventure and they're yellow submarine to fight the blue meanies so you, you kind of get this descent to madness then you have this is when they're starting to come like they're like they're at the depths of their just mess high completely thing and then in 1969 they release abbey road 
which is one of the most famous albums of all time, and it's the start of them getting, like, sort of back... I mean, they still have Maxwell Silver, Hamlet, Octopus Garden, and all these, like, weird stuff, but then you have, like, like songs that sort of harken back and start, like, the, they start this, like, small, like, almost, like, mellowing of their insanity, like, Here Comes the Sun and, like, Her Majesty and stuff like that. And then, then in 1970, you have the finals Beatles album, Let It Be, my favorite Beatles album. This was after information about their breakup got leaked. They they were gonna break up. They released this album called Let It Be, and this is the complete. This is this album is all about looking back on their career, and sort of just reflecting on this whole where they like it's reflecting on the good old days of when they were back, in their like thing. But it's it's they're not going back to that boy band style like. You have my favorite song of all time across the universe, and then you have Let It Be, which is my number two favorite song of all time. And all of these songs, some of them go back to that boy band style, but songs like Across the Little Universe, Let It Be, um, and stuff like that. And the last song, this was the last Beatles song I ever released, the last song on the last album, Get Back. And, um, get back, get it's, back. It's pretty much this entire album is sort of like this, this almost like it's over let's look back and see this whole big story that we just we just told over the course of 10 years how we changed music forever changed the way music worked forever for the past 10 years and yes and it just sort of after let it be it was over and and sometimes yeah, you just gotta that let was it the be. end of the beatles yeah that was the end of the beatles decade and that would happen and now what happened? They all started their solo careers. John Lennon got assassinated. Uh, Who assassinated the musician? McCart- well, he was a big activist and like protester. <laughs> Who and, like, does that? Peace guy. Fucking crazy people. What do you mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, Paul McCartney's still around, singing "Temporary Secretary," <laughs> doing all this shit. Um, I need it. George Harrison died somewhere along the way. No one really cared and about Ringo him. Ringo Starr's still chilling around, not doing much. He's he's but painting, yeah. right? I don't know. But yeah, okay. I feel like so, I feel like Ringo's done well for for himself. So this is why the Beatles are my favorite band. If you sort of understand, I hope this explain like this is like a rough explanation of what is probably hey come you I, I I would like to state that you have done the best job at convincing me. No one else has explained the Beatles in any form of meaningful way to me, but but that now I think I get it. I think if I was it's because no one, no one really, well I'd say only like like not, not a lot of people really explain it this way. They're kind of just like Beatles changed music and everything, which is true. But they did it in this way, and then um, what's it called? So yeah, like, and then you got their solo careers and everything. But for a long time, Let It Be was my was my number one album. It was my favorite album, and I stated this. But the tr- but just recently, I've come to realize Let It Be is honestly not as that great of an album. And here's what like. It has my top two songs. Oh, one thing I want to talk about that really in Let It Be that signifies it is, is the long and winding road, which literally talks about like life and progression and everything like that. And that's the pretty that's a great one. So listen to that. But it has my two favorite songs. Number one is Across the Universe, my favorite song of all time, and number two is Let It Be, and the, which the album is based off. But other than other than Long and Winding Road and Get Back, every other song on the album is not that great. And just because I, I was really, I was always putting it as my favorite just because of the whole concept behind it and those two songs. But with so many not great songs, I can't really say it's my favorite album anymore. It's definitely still in my three by three. You know what I mean? Like, I can't really say it's my overall favorite album. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely get what you mean. Where it's like. Yeah. So for so for for me something like, like Planet Eight is really close yeah. to one of my favorite albums. But like, there's just like, right like like Rev V or yeah Rev Re Seven, or uh, it, actually it's really just Re Seven. It's just like one one not amazing song, 
is uh, yeah. It, 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 out of <laughs> but but even something that's even like out of service's worst song is still a very good song. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's so important to note. God, they're so good. They're fucking. I don't understand how they're not like Beatles level. <laughs> like they, they really they do they do remind me they kind of the look like that a little bit they have that same like you know uniformity to them like with like the thing and i i love their they do like the like the like their whole the aesthetic and style that they're going for definitely reminds me of the beatles they were definitely inspired by the beatles like but no one seems to acknowledge them and i don't know why I mean, there's. I mean, it's just because they're not widespread enough. Yeah, they got a pretty hardcore fan base, but like, mm-hmm. again, not huge. Although I, I think I, th- in fact, I know they keep at it. They're gonna blow up. I, th- I, yeah. I keep feeling like it's gonna happen, but man, they're they're so good. I like their, their, they they really went from this like weird style where they started off as like this sort of like spaced out um like sort of, like planet eight and secret eight were these sort of like like spaced out detached albums mm-hmm. uh and then they get into like they get into like their shoe injunction part where they're like really everything on that album is really dark and really like I wouldn't say that. I'd say the second track. I don't. I can't remember any of the names. Any uh, of the oh, songs Magic on Hour. Album. I think yeah, yeah that it's one's the, it, pretty it's, happy and whimsical. It's the lyrics of Magic Hour that are the sad part. But that whole what is it about? I don't know. Uh, I don't know it's like cheating or something. It, like yeah, like the the video is out there. It's it's. Ha- have you seen the video? It looks like a um. No. It looks like a a Madoka labyrinth. Almost. Oh, sh- that's amazing! It, oh my god, it, it, I gotta watch it. Hold on, I'm gonna send it. That's perfect. But um, yeah, Shoe Injunction is is great. It's definitely like a darker album. Um, and yeah, so and then they like, and up until Question Juku Junction is a great song. Yeah, up until that point, they were they were anonymous. Like they didn't. They they just published under the out of service name. They never like craft punk like craft punk they never there was no mention of who they were before then what mattered was their music so like it, it, but now they're now they're going into like this sort of like i feel like i ha- i may have seen this but i forgot about it yeah well they're going into this like sort of uh sciencey poppy sort of still mm-hmm. still rock but like upbeat uh tune and i'm i'm really liking it I'm I'm happy for Out of Service. I'm real excited for their new album to arrive in the mail because I, because it's coming out in July. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's sort of already I'll, out, but it's coming out. Tight. I like Out of Service. <laughs> You're so good. Why are they so good? I want to quickly mention another band before I get into what I think is probably going to be the final point. Um, Led Zeppelin. They've always been... They're my number two favorite band, but I think overall, in terms of albums, they have my favorite album. And uh, that is Led Zeppelin 2. The first album was great. It had a lot of great songs, but it was sort of just like they're almost like... Like, the first album, okay, it established their style and established, like, this is who we are and this is what we're doing. And they were doing it at a time when no one else was doing it, so it was great. Now everyone tries to do it. But, um... Hold on one second. Now, I just have uh, to get water. Keep talking about Led Zeppelin. Okay. The, okay. About the, the so flying you have, aircraft made of heavy. Yeah, yeah. So then you have Led Zeppelin 2, which is sort of like really where they got the hang of it. And it's great. All A lot of great songs. Let me look up the track list for reference. I think every single song on Led Zeppelin 2 is amazing. And there's not a single bad song. And that's why every song is great. Some of my favorite songs of all time. My favorite Led Zeppelin songs on there, Ramble On. And, um... So you got, yeah, every every song on this this album is great, and it's a perfect al- it's a perfect album, and you back. Mhm. I was just saying it's a perfect album, and that is why, and every song's great, and it was really it's like the def- it's like this is, 
if you want to know why Led Zeppelin is 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 appealing, just listen to this album. Every song it perfectly defines their style and tone. Has the best Led Zeppelin song in my opinion on it, and um, it's the best album ever made. And uh, yeah, I think one of the great things about Led Zeppelin is it isn't really that the content of their some of their songs have great meaning, but like the content of their songs doesn't really have much meaning. It's 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 Led Zeppelin's a pure like sound band in terms of like they have very like no one was doing guitar riffs and no one was doing like sound like this at the time and no one has truly captured it since and that's why they're so great out of service has some really sick guitar like no, no one appreciates it enough but man they're they're really good at playing mm-hmm. the guitar <laughs> kai, kai is kai's kai's a fucking he's a he's a talented man talented young boy um, yeah, so when I've really gotten into like 22 or something, they're they're so young. <laughs> they're, so they're 22. T- it's somewhere around there. Oh my god, we're. Oh my god, I'm almost 21. I never made an album. I wrote a book though, so I guess I sort of did something. You wrote like two books. The first book doesn't count. <laughs> quest. It was part one, in the Quest trilogy. It was, remember it was Quest Volume 1 in 2000's Word Art. Okay. Back to what I was saying. Someone I've gotten, really gotten into lately since his death that I wasn't really into that much before. I was, before he died I was kind of into him a little bit, but now I'm like really into him to one of my favorite artists is David Bowie. He's great too. Um, he's amazing. He, he does a lot of great stuff. His, he's another person where his music started off really poppy and got more abstract as he progressed. And Black Star is one of the greatest concept albums ever made. Um, go listen to it a hundred times so you actually understand it. I still don't fully understand it, and I've listened to it a bunch of times. See, it de- to me, it was the best album on a technical level of last year. But I feel like the fact that I forgot about it when making my best albums of the year list proves that it wasn't, didn't deserve the spot. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it is technically by far the best album of 2016. But the fact that when I was set down to make the list, I didn't remember it, it's not up there. Anyway, moving on, David Bowie is great. I think the final wrap up, it's almost like a beacon of hope. In terms of like i look at it as a beacon of hope in terms of life in general and music specifically because not a lot not a lot of mo- modern music there's nowhere as great as many great artists as there was back then in the good old days yeah, I, I was born in the wrong generation um anyway you have someone that had sort of a beacon of hope for not only music but for just life in general and that is audio Mm -hmm. it's a big one dude is a fucking like insanely talented polymath just good at everything a fucking one man band jack of all trades master of all of them all of them as well fucking like he He's probably like 22 or so, probably around that age. Insane, and nowhere, nowhere near the amount of recognition that he deserves for being literally. He's just, he's just like, he's just thrown in the, like the, the like he's thrown in the crap, crap shoot of like, Tumblr core artists. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like he's just like thrown in. He is Tumblr core. No offense. He, he's he thrown is. In I've, in this, I've talked. Like, I've talked to this about him. We've <laughs> talked yeah, about he's, this. Tum, that, he's it's not th- a bad thing. It is something. It's something we all were at some point. But yeah, <laughs> like. But he's he's thrown into this like kind of gets like grouped all in encompassing. With that. Yeah, like all encompassing thing. Like oh, he's the, but he's just this like this this hidden genius literally literally the like 
the, like Western Vocaloid music is a thing. It's not as big as Japanese it's Vocaloid or sucks, Chinese Vocaloid. It's it's not it's not great. There's a lot of like really shitty stuff, uh, and then and then somehow there's just audio. And he he is the single best Western producer, and just like it it blows my mind that this man exists and produces stuff for us. To me, he is the best still active modern. He's the best currently active Western musician. Period. I don't think that's an exaggeration. Yeah, like, I don't think it's an exaggeration. Like, have you... List, go listen to Sunset Memories. Mm-hmm. I would say the best way to listen to it is... Probably lying in your bed with your eyes closed at night. It, yeah, it's just, like, visualizing visualizing everything well first watch the Mm -hmm. i'd say first watch the uh watch the this feeling as a cliche music video and then i would go watch and then i would go listen to this album sunset so you can so you can visualize it in the art style yeah so you can visualize in the art style and it's it has this 80s synth wave feel and tone so good it's like this this specific it's almost it's a What's the best way to explain it? It's a... Go read my top three albums 2016 list that I did. That explains it a lot. But it's sort of like this... It's an, It's sort of an evolution of both the Vocaloid and the future funk genres. It's, um... So Synthwave is, is generally, like... It's it's more 80s than 90s, <laughs> which is, like, yeah, what Vaporwave yeah. is. And like future funk is around that time period, but it's it's original. It sound it's supposed to sound yeah. like it was made in the eighties, but it's it's made on its, its own. It's this uh, it's this this eighties, it's an eighties positive perception of the future, yes. and that's the tone it gives off. It's like now every everything discussed about the future is dystopia, World War Three, nuclear holocaust. There was always there used to be this optimistic look of the future, and I feel like it, it reminds me a lot of Back to the Future too. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It has a very similar aesthetic. Yeah, it has a very similar aesthetic to Back to the Future too. It's this obviously bad shit was happening in Back to the Future, but it has this, it's this positive future aesthetic. Like bad, bad shit and was happening, but it wasn't that, like the world was good. It, it was just kind of shitty. The to world them. was good. It was just shitty for that one family. Yeah. And um, yeah, so like. It's just this positivity, and the way the album conveys this positivity is so nice. It's just, it's the perfect album to listen to when you had a shitty day, or you're having a shitty time in life, and you just sit back, close your eyes, and you just sort of, like, relax. Think, and you, you think this about, into this world. you think about this world where there's robots that are as sentient as humans, and they're, they're treated well. Like, they're... There's like, no difference. Yeah, like everyone's treated equally. There's that werewolf guy at the jukebox. I remember him. Yeah, he's he's Seth literally Hunt. he's literally a lichen. There's a there's a song about him called um, yeah. Silver Moon, I think, by mm-hmm. Audio. Yeah. So yeah, you have this Silver whole world. Moon. No, everything's perfect. The biggest problem is that the the biggest problem. He's uh, he's in this, he's in this... he's dating the monitor girl. Yeah, the biggest problem in this world. Is that a girl doesn't know how to like come to terms with her feelings for a guy? Has nothing to do with the fact that he's a robot. It has nothing to do with any any social or racial divides or anything. It's literally just that's it, and it's amazing. The art and the art that goes along with it. The art is amazing, and uh, everything's perfect about it. It has the perfect aesthetic. It tells the story through its aesthetic, which is great. Sunset Memories is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. One of the best modern albums. Absolutely. But the catalyst for this podcast, the thing that really wanted to make me did sit down and talk about music, was Audio recently released a new album. It was a collaboration album. But nonetheless, it is called Wesley Dreamers. Correct. And it's been building up for a while with the like they released uh Chinatown Blues preview a little while ago. And um oh, well the the original preview is a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. But he has done it 
again. But he's transitioned into an entirely new genre while still maintaining the same Sorry, well, story and aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> this 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 guy has put together like one of the greatest looking videos ever completely on his own. Like it it still conveys the same style of narrative and the same feel of narrative. But it's it's a prequel to the last album. Yeah. But it's um it's it's a new genre. It's it's like <laughs> it's it's, it's like, the same it's the same story essentially done in indie rock and yet it totally It's like twenty tens twenty tens indie rock. Like and he he collaborated we should we should clear this out clear. He's using a female vocaloid voice. To tell the story. It's not him singing into a mic. Well, we should we probably didn't, didn't clarify that but um, yeah yeah so he collaborated with what's the man called karma wears white ties which i assume is just a standard indie rock band yeah they were really good though like and i think what they did is this was a this was an entirely original album by then that had nothing to no, do no with no no the, no no uh, so so here's what happened they wrote some instrumentals and they did not have any they didn't have any like lyrics any point for that okay that makes and then that they, makes more they sense, reached out yeah. and audio wrote the five songs on the album he wrote lyrics for them and then they recorded them and then he came back and covered them on his own so he wrote so, all of the lyrics so it's it's they're remixed though from the originals i assume right and, a little bit uh no it's just the it's just the vocals that okay are changed and the mix yeah up. like great amazing album and it's just i think what's so impressive about it is that he still manages to tell the same continue the same narrative will go backwards in the same narrative and continue the same feel aesthetic of like a positive future and everything like that but entirely different musical genre and it's also a collaborate entirely different musical genre that usually gets thrown under the bus as being shit except for the people that are part of that community like from the outside perspective, indie rock, modern 2010s indie rock, isn't is sort of looked down upon as like a shitty genre. Yeah, but fuck um, them. I didn't I didn't think much of it modern. I didn't think much of the genre. Um, but this album's amazing and it's great. And that genre complements the voice perfectly. It's great and um. Go listen to it. It's 10 out of 10. I think Audio's albums are some of the few albums where once you finish it, it's just, in, like, for me, for me, like, it would be, for me, I listened, most of my listenings of Sunset Memories were on the subway in D.C. Or, like, the Metro, yeah. it's called there. And most of my listening all of my listenings so far of wesley dreamers have been in the car commute to and from work like and it's just because i'm driving i don't have it to where it plays the next album so there's just after uh, the last song finishes on both albums uh, it just stops um wait, well that's not right what? but uh there is a, a, a it's a pretty big announcement just have well it's not that big. what happened huh uh, Undertale coming out for the PS4. What is... What? Is it just a port? Yeah, it's a port. Undertale 2. No, it's a port. It's not Undertale no, it's 2. A port. It's a port. <laughs> okay, is there any differences? <laughs> the physical edition comes with a locket. Oh, good thing I own a PS4. I don't have a PS4. Um, I... Back to audio. It's just like, I listen to it. And then the album would end, and there's just this silence. And it's just like I don't know how they, there. I have no words to explain that feeling after those albums. After you're done, not even the first time, just after you're done listening to those albums any time, and there's just that silence. I don't know if you can explain that feeling. It's over. I have the high ground. No, it's just over. It's kind of like you 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 like come off a high almost. You come back to reality. Yeah. What'd you say? It is back to reality. Oh, it's the... 
<laughs> oh, it's it's sins. You got to do a slow zoom on that. Look at, look at the hand on the top right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like something out of a fucking uh, fucking Tim Wham City. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely hear the Wham City thing. Um. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, does that wrap up our discussion of music? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Oh, wait, I another thing. I also, the only other album to give me that feeling now that I got one finishing the audio albums is after listening to Let It Be by the Beatles because it's like the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, well. Any closing remarks? Uh, nope. Uh, fuck music. Thank you for listening. Um, but you you guys should all buy my album. I have two albums out right now. What are they? They are the Hamilton. I already on that. Complete soundtrack. You already on yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad you own it. Um, go purchase my soundtrack. It's me. It's me rapping about how uh, how I'm gonna kill Aaron Burr. And yeah, uh, definitely. That's how it happened. I, and then and then after my ascension and descension, um, I made a Polynesian style album called the Moana original soundtrack. I could and really go, listen to that go too. for some Polynesian sauce right now. Those are my albums. Josh This is this has been Lin Manuel Miranda. Josh what? the the locket the locket that comes in the front of the Undertale box plays his mm-hmm. theme. It has a little music box inside of it that plays the song out loud. I'm literally considering buying the physical version <laughs> of us for a console I do not own just so I can get that lock. And how much is it? How much is the physical version? Right. I I don't think there is a price point yet. I am I am, is it sad that I'm considering buying it just for that locket? Well, I'm I'm probably going to buy it. I want it. I want it so bad. <laughs> okay. Wait, yeah, there, there's that's... an original sound I already uh, I own the soundtrack on vinyl, but I also want the CD one now. I didn't know there was one. It's only 15 bucks. Holy shit. I need this. The soundtrack on vinyl? No. On uh what? on C D. Oh, I didn't know there was a physical C D. There it's two CDs actually. But yeah, it's it's awesome. There's a And that brings us back to music. Should I should I buy this? What is the best Silent Hill soundtrack? I Good night.